Hi everyone, Sabrina here, and today I'll be showing you my second design team project for the Not Too Shabby Shop. My featured stamp set for this video is this adorable little otter stamp set by Darcy's. It's called Damn Good. I will also be using a few images from this Lawn Fawn stamp set called Totally Awesome. And then I will also be using the coordinating dies for that stamp set. And you can buy the Darcy's stamp at the Not Too Shabby Shop. I do have a discount code in my description if you want to receive 10% off your next order. I will go ahead and leave that down below for you guys. I'm also going to use a few border dies uh, by Elizabeth Craft. Um, I plan on cutting out some waves as well as a little sand hill. And I will use all of these products to create a really cute valentine scene. I went ahead and stamped out all of the images that I wanted to use onto some Bristol paper and that is because I want to color these images in with my zig markers and this paper is really nice for watercoloring. I did stamp all the images with my Versafine Onyx Black ink. It's a nice crisp black ink. Um, and I also went ahead and added some clear embossing powder over that. And I typically do that when I'm working with my zigs or any type of watercolor because it provides me with a barrier so that my colors don't go outside of the image lines. And on screen I have provided the markers that I'm using. So I wrote down the numbers of each marker in case you guys want to color your image is the same way I'm coloring mine. And I color with my zigs very similarly to how I color with my Copics. So I start out with my darkest color and I map out the shadows. Um, I decided to have a center highlight for this otter. So I'm placing most of the dark areas around the edges of its face. And then in areas where there's overlap, I like to add a little bit of shadow, so underneath his belly where the heart overlaps and um, in front of his feet, I added a little bit more darker color. And then I go over that with my mid-tone, and then instead of going over it with a light marker, I just go in with my water brush and blend everything together. So the water brush kind of acts as my highlight color. And I colored that second otter the exact same way, so I did that off camera. I did add a lighter brown to the stomach and the snout nose of the other otter. And I did include that other marker I used. And now I'm going to color in their noses and this one's tail and the feet. And I'm really not sure if that second otter is a beaver. I feel like his tail is more beaver-like, but... Regardless, I'm going to color both of these guys in as otters. And the water brush that I'm using is a Winka Stella brush that is actually empty. So what I did was I added water to it and then I sprinkled in some gold perfect pearls. And it honestly gives almost the exact same effect as a actual Winka Stella brush does. So there's a tip in case you run out of Winka Stella, you can just refill it and add some gold perfect pearls to it. So I'll just finish up coloring here. From that totally awesome stamp set by Lawn Fawn, I'm using the lily pads, the cattails, the log, and the flowers, as well as the dragonflies. And they're just gonna help set my scene a bit. I wanted these otters to look like they were kinda in a swampy area. And I'll have that one laying on its back with the heart in the water, and then that other one I will have on land. For these grasses, I'm just going to use one green marker here. I'm adding it to the base of the grass, and then I'm taking my water brush and pulling that pigment up towards the tips of the grass. And like I said earlier, the water brush kind of acts as your highlight. So it just dilutes the pigment a little bit and creates another tone. And the same thing, I'm going to just add a little bit of brown to the base of the cattails. I decided to use another brown as well. And I'll just pull that upwards to add a little highlight. Very simple. For the log, I think I used two brown shades. 
Yes. And then I leave the middle portion completely white and the water brush will move that pigment and color the white portion. And you want to leave some white, that way you can create your highlight there. So I'll just finish up these last few images. I decided to color these water lilies pink. And then I'll just add a little bit of light blue to the dragonfly wings. And then off camera I will die cut everything. And the Darcy's stamp set don't, I think all of her stamp sets, they don't come with dies. So I did fussy cut the otters out. And I'll just set those aside and work on my background now. I'm going to ink blend with Salty Ocean Distress Oxide and Broken China Distress Oxide. I'm starting out with my Salty Ocean and I'm using a Picket Fence Studios blender brush here. And I will just blend some ink onto this A2 sized white panel. This is Nina cardstock, but if you want it to blend a little bit easier, I would recommend Bristol. But the Nina works, you just have to work a little bit harder here to get a more seamless blend. And then once I added that Salty Ocean, I'll go over that with my Broken China. And then typically when I ink blend with my oxides, I like to go over each ink twice. This sort of just ensures that both inks are blending seamlessly. And I'm happy with that background, so I'll go ahead and clean up my glass mat. And then I will grab my Distress Water Sprayer and add a few water droplets to the background. And I let those droplets stay on the paper for a few seconds, and then I take a dry paper towel and just blot up the excess water. And that creates a really cool texture. So I'm going to go ahead and take my Elizabeth Craft Wave Dye and die cut that twice from this panel. And then off camera I also die cut this twice from some vellum. So I will layer those waves on top of one another and then in between I'm going to add my vellum waves. And I really like the way that that looks. So I'm going to add some ATG tape behind my ink blended waves. And then behind the vellum waves, I'm only adding some tape to the bottom of them. And that is because you can see adhesive through the vellum, so I'm trying to hide it as best as I can. I'll start out with this large ink blended wave, and I'll add that to the top of this 4 by 5 and a quarter inch blue panel. And here, I actually realized that you can still see the adhesive when I overlapped the second vellum on top. So I'm going to just use my fingers and wipe away that adhesive from my ATG tape. And then I'm just adding tiny little dots of glue behind that layer of vellum. For this vellum, I kept the ATG tape at the bottom because this ink blended panel did cover that up completely. And then you can see that I s flipped some of the waves in a different direction just to add some interest. At the bottom of this panel, I'm going to add a sand bank, which I die cut from that same Elizabeth Craft die set. And then I'm flipping this panel around and trimming off the excess. Okay, so that's going to create my background, and now I can start assembling the scene. So I'm going to take that standing otter and add him to the forefront on top of the ground. I'll also add my log and a few cattails. And then my other otter I placed in the water. And you can see that I tucked him behind some of the vellum waves. And I really like that look. I like that you can still see his tail through the vellum waves. So before adhering everything, I'm just kind of laying out moving things around to see what I like. I'm also going to add my two little dragonflies. And here I'm using my sentiments as a guide because I do want to put it up on that right hand corner. And I like how that looks so I'll go ahead and glue everything down. I am using my art glitter glue here. 
And then for a few of the images, I will pop them up with some foam tape. And I think this scene turned out super cute. I am going to use the sentiment that says, I utterly adore you. So this would be a great Valentine's Day card. And I think it would be even cute if you cut out the waves from pink cardstock and create a more traditional Valentine's Day card. I will pop up my other otter in front of the log. I'll just finish up gluing these last few cattails here. And like I said earlier, this Darcy's Otter stamp is available at the Not Too Shabby Shop if you want to pick it up. She does sell a few other things that I'm using in this card, and I'll be sure to link those down in the description box as well. So I am using Uline foam tape to pop up my images, and the backing on the foam tape is a little bit difficult to peel off, so I'm using my scissors to help me out there. And I did decide to also add in that little fish that came in the otter stamp set. I just tucked him underneath the ink blended wave. I think that looks cute. So now I'm going to work on my sentiment. I stamped out, I utterly adore you, onto some black cardstock in white heat embossed it. And now I'm using my scissors just to trim it out into a small rectangle. And then I will just adhere that to the top right corner. And that will complete my scene. So I'm just going to flip this panel around and add some ATG tape behind it. And I'll adhere that onto some black cardstock. I love how black really frames in your scene. And the black goes really nicely with the black and white heat emboss sentiment. Alright, so once that's adhered, I'll flip over this black panel and adhere it to my standard A2 sized card base. And that will complete my card. Thank you guys so much for watching and go ahead and head on over to the Not Too Shabby shop and use that discount code provided in the description down below. And if you haven't yet already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and I'll be sure to respond to you as quick as I can. And I'll see you next time. Bye!